it's Tori and welcome back to The Crafty Girl. Today we are going to be making this adorable windmill style tote bag. Now I got this pattern inspiration based on a crochet video that I saw yesterday. Um, actually, there were a number of videos that came up, um, but I, I tend to get inspiration or draw inspiration from a lot of knitting or crochet patterns um, because they are pretty simple to translate to the circular knitting machine. So uh, that is what I did this morning. Um, this is really, really adorable and you can customize it in so many ways. I went with a boho look, so I added the optional braiding. I also created a tassel um, and then added a wooden toggle button here. Um, not toggle, just a wooden button here. And then I used I-cord because I got the new Addy Egg, where actually you can see my messy desk over here. Um, but I got the Addy egg right here. And so I was able to make these really cool straps in a matter of like a couple minutes. It was pretty awesome. Um, also the benefits of this bag, another different feature you can add that I'm going to show you how to do is to add a little slip pocket in here. Um, so there's so many ways, like I said, to customize this bag and you can make it as complicated or as easy as you want. Essentially it's four rectangles. That's it. Four rectangles and a strap. Um, so if you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we have memberships available. We have the girl gang here at the Crafty Girl. Um, if you join the channel by clicking the little join button here, uh, you can support the channel for a super cheap amount for like two bucks a month and you get access to patterns like this well before anyone else, as well as some free downloadables and access to a members only group. So that is that. Let's dive in to the tutorial. And for this project, I actually used this big twist yarn. Um, it's 100% acrylic and I love the way it works up. It's actually a little bit um, sturdier than like my Karen Simply Soft. So it worked really great, especially because I was going for this boho theme and the color is cream. So this is really good. Um, and again, it worked up really well. Also, you'll need an optional button if you want to add a button closure, a crochet hook because we will, a smaller crochet hook, I use a five millimeter um, to finish my ends. Uh, if you would like to do the braiding portion, you can use a larger crochet hook. I think this one's eight millimeter. Um, that works really well. Scissors and then I have my pattern here. Also optional, um, if you have an I-cord maker, my brand new Addy Egg is getting a lot of use right now. So you can use your I-cord maker to make the straps, or you can use fabric to make the straps, you can crochet straps, however you wanna add those. Um, but this Addy Egg, it's on sale right now. I'm not sponsored at all, um, but I think it's for $38 and it is amazing. So, oh, and then lastly, <laughs> the machine that I used was this tool right here, the mushroom house, but you can change the size by just using like a smaller version if you want like a little tiny bag um, or maybe even the larger one if you wanna make a really large tote bag. So um, that is what I used or those are all the tools that I used. Let's go ahead and dive into the process. So as I mentioned, you will need four rectangles. And so uh, I used the Mushroom House 32 pin to create four same size same size rectangles with 80 rows each. I did cast on um, and off with waste yarn because it's easier to get those nice clean finishes, especially because we're gonna be grafting them together. Now to do the braiding is a little bit different and I'm gonna show you how to do that here. So once you're at row 80, you're going to go in the center on the left hand side and you're gonna mark the two pins that are about in the center. And again, you can customize this, you can do multiple braids, whatever works for you. Um, so I'm just doing braiding on one side because I wanted the inside of the bag to be flat. So I marked both of my uh, um, positions there on the rows that I just knitted. And now I'm gonna cast off with waist yarn, but I'm gonna drop those two stitches. So that's how we're gonna create the braiding. Once we add that waist yarn, you're gonna see, you'll go around the pins just as you typically would. And then when you get to the two marked pins, you're gonna go behind both of those pins and use whatever you have around. I couldn't find my hook, but I found it. Um, so put those behind both of those pins. And then after you do that, you're just gonna cast off normally. So just keep cranking your handle until it, the work falls right off. 
Now the one at the top, that is the panel that I've already done just to show you what it looks like. And then we're gonna give our tube a little bit of a stretch here and then we are going to crochet together and crochet finish the bottom first. So we do wanna start with the bottom. And I always use stitch markers to mark my final um, couple of stitches there just so that I don't miss them because sometimes I do, um, in fact, I, I do it almost every single time. Uh, and it also helps, it's a really easy trick because then you can just fold your loops together instead of counting them and then you get an even um, finish all the way down. And that way as well, when you fold the other side in half, it'll line up perfectly. So then we're gonna do a slip stitch crochet finish all the way down the side. So you're just picking up each loop on each side. Again, go slow so that you don't miss any of them. Once you get done with that, then you're just gonna take off the waist yarn and then we're going to start the braiding process. Now here's some really good news too for those of you that have asked me for a tutorial on making a braided headband. Um, it's exactly the same process. Just use however many rows you typically use for a headband. Um, I use 90 to 100. This one's only 80 because that's the bag size, um, but the process is exactly the same. So we are gonna take off our little hooks here so that we can drop every stitch all the way down. So make sure that you don't miss any. Um, and this part can take a little bit uh, of time, which is, you would think it would be a little faster. Um, but you're gonna go all the way down to the crochet finished end. And the great news is we've already finished the other end. So those loops are locked into place and they're not gonna go anywhere. Now we're gonna begin the braiding process. So we're gonna grab that other crochet hook. This one is an eight millimeter. And uh, we are gonna, again, make sure every loop has been released all the way down. And we're gonna pick up the two loops that have already been crocheted together in the bottom. So pick up those two loops right there. Then we don't wanna create a lot of bulk at the bottom. Um, we're gonna end up doing three yarns at a time, but right now we're just gonna do two for that first one, um, just so there's not a lot of pull. Then from this point on, we are gonna take three bars and put them on the hook and pull them through. And we're gonna continue this process all the way down. And this is what's gonna give us that really fantastic braiding option. So again, just pick up three bars, put them on the hook, and then pull the other three bars over and continue to do that all the way down. Make sure you don't do them out of order. Make sure you don't skip any. These are some very important pieces. You can also get really creative. I have done a lot of different patterns by twisting the yarn, by changing the different yarn sizes. Um, so there are many things you can do to customize this and really make it your own. Now, when we get down to the very end, we do wanna decrease this so that you end up with only one loop on your hook. And that's because we're going, and then you wanna mark this. I used a stitch marker so it didn't go anywhere. You can use a bobby pin too, or whatever you have. But the reason we're gonna do this is because now we are gonna crochet finish the other side. And we're gonna use that loop just like we would when we are crochet finishing any end of a tube. So now when we are at that point where we're gonna pick up that loop, and like I said, it's just like what you would stand, do on a typical basis. So you're gonna put your hook through the loop and just do a slip stitch into the next one and then remove your stitch marker and then continue as normal. And you'll do that all the way down and then remove your waist yarn. So you should have four rectangles all with 80 rows. And now we're gonna use the yarn tails to connect them all using a mattress stitch. So we're gonna do this nice hidden clean mattress stitch. So I'm gonna use my yarn tails to actually create the mattress stitch on each of these panels. Um, if you don't have long enough yarn tails, you can just use an additional piece of yarn in the same color. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the mattress stitch, uh, it's, I used to hate it. Let me just be perfectly frank. I used to hate it and now I love it, now that I found a couple of tips and tricks around it. Um, now, it's a little bit harder to do a mattress stitch with this because I did crochet finish the end um, as we just walked through and those stitches are really, really tight, but it doesn't matter, it'll look great in the end. So uh, for this, because it's the bottom of the bag, I'm actually only gonna pick up one of those bars on each side. Uh, I like to pick up two because it makes it go a little bit faster, but um, because it's the bottom of the bag and I wanted to make sure there weren't any holes, um, I went through each side and picked up one single uh, lo uh, loop 
on each side and I did that all the way down until I got to the end of the width of the rectangle. Now when I get to the end of the rectangle what you want to do is you actually want to reinforce it and then leave your tails there because you may be able depending on how long they are you may be able to use them later to do additional mattress stitch joins for the rest of the bag. Now the order that you join them isn't as important as the layout. So uh, you do wanna make sure that your layout is correct. Uh, so uh, make sure, and I'll pop up a little picture here just to remind you what the layout is. Um, don't get disoriented as you start to add your pieces because sometimes you might start stitching the wrong direction. So just make sure everything's oriented and it's going the direction you want. And then we're gonna continue ma um, mattress stitching all of these bottom pieces together. So we'll end up with four different joins at the bottom before we combine the sides or before we join the sides. We are going to use the mattress stitch once again to join the sides. You are gonna go in a counterclockwise motion. Um, so it's gonna look a little odd because you're gonna have a short piece next to a long piece, but that's okay because the tops are going to be triangle. So if that's the way it should look. So it doesn't really matter which side um, you start with. Again, as long as you are connecting uh, in a counterclockwise counter motion, um, then you will be fine. And then we're just gonna use that same mattress stitch um, on both sides and go up to the height of the shortest piece. And we won't need those yarn tails, so you can go ahead and reinforce that corner, tie the tails, and then hide them in your work. So this is kind of a preview of what it's going to look like. Um, and as you continue to attach those panels, this will look even cooler. So at this point, you could actually just add the straps and have your bag completed. Um, it'll look something like this. So cute, I really, really love how this is turning out. Um, but I'm gonna show you next how to attach the I-cord is straps, and then we're gonna actually add a little slip pocket and some other details. Now, if you're new to working with I-cord, it is pretty amazing. You can sit and just make tons and tons of I-cord and then just cut it to the size that you need. Um, so it's just so convenient, so amazingly easy. And then you just remove the extra little yarn there and then just pick up the loops and tie off the end. That is it. So I just made two straps the same size and now we're gonna connect them to the corners of the bag. Now attaching the straps wasn't anything fancy. I just did a simple stitch um, uh, on the inside of the bag just so that I can hide you know, any of the bumps that were there. However, I will say orient your bag on you first to find out how you want it to lay. So for me, I wanted the braiding to make sure it went diagonal in the front and the back, which means that I had to be very strategic with which of those triangles I attached the straps to. So again, um, it's just a matter of however you want to attach them. You could crochet straps on. Um, you could, what would be super cool as well, you could just do rings, like metal rings, and then have that as straps. So there are lots of different options for you. Um, but again, all I did with all four straps was just do a simple stitch front and back on all of them, and then I tied off the yarn tails, and then I hid them as well. For the optional pocket, I actually used my Addy Express and I knitted 25 rows in a tube setting. Um, then I crochet finished both ends. Now, when you put the bag on, you do wanna place it so that it sits kind of horizontally, or not horizontally, um, diagonally, so then that way it makes sense for the shape of the bag. And then you're just gonna go through and connect the bottom. Um, again, I kinda used a hybrid of a mattress stitch and then I went back and did a whip stitch on the bottom. Um, this is on the inside so you're not going to see it. But you definitely wanna make sure that you stitch the bottom and both sides. And I did do a really clean mattress stitch on both sides and then I reinforced the corners. Um, because this is a pocket, it's probably gonna get use. So we wanna make sure that you are always reinforcing. And when I say reinforce, I mean um, stitching through a few times before tying off. And then I went through and um, of course, as always, hid those tails. And I try to hide my tails as I go. As you know, that could be the worst part when you're wrapping up a project. So um, if you can do it while you're going, it might make it seem faster. Now, because this is kind of a tote bag style, I would recommend adding a button closure or a closure of some kind. Um, I find the button for this boho looked worked really, really well with the wooden button there. Um, and then I just added a little crochet loop on the side and it keeps the bag closed really well and it also looks pretty cute. All right, here is the finished bag. 
this is probably one of my favorite things that I've ever made. And I know I say that all the time, but the seams are just almost flawless. I love this boho vibe. Um, the little tassel, I made it removable. And that way, if I, you know, wanted to add like a scarf or something, I can. Um, added a little button for a closure. And then on the inside, we have our little pocket little slip pocket there so you can pop something right in there for easy access and it's pretty awesome so let me show you kind of the size for this so you can see on that's on my mannequin okay so here's my mannequin um so it's actually a nice big size I could probably fit my iPad um in it uh there's so many possibilities so anyway thank you so much for watching hopefully you liked this content if you did don't forget to like and subscribe also you can join the channel and become a member of the girl gang and get first access to tutorials like this as well as some free downloadables and some other members only activities and communication so thank you so much everybody until next time see ya